He crossed the line from fame to infamy, an NFL star born and raised in the Bay Area who became the defendant in the trial of the century, notoriously acquitted of double murder. O.J. Simpson has died at the age of 76 after a battle with prostate cancer. Simpson was a star running back at USC who won the Heisman Trophy in 1968. He played 11 seasons in the NFL, first with the Buffalo Bills, then the San Francisco 49ers. He then went on to become a celebrity off the field as a sports broadcaster, actor, and pitch man. But his fall from grace started with this sensational low-speed chase in June of 1994. The world watched as police pursued his white Bronco on L.A. freeways. Simpson was accused in the stabbing death of ex-wife Nicole Brown Simpson and friend Ron Goldman. His trial dominated headlines and TV screens for months and divided the nation. If it doesn't fit, you must acquit. Not guilty of the crime of murder. And many remember where they were that day when they heard that verdict. While Simpson was acquitted in the criminal trial, another jury later found him liable for their deaths in a civil trial. Simpson always maintained his innocence, but wrote a book titled, If I Did It. Later in life, he spent nine years in a Nevada prison for a Las Vegas robbery and was paroled in 2017. But before all that, Simpson called San Francisco home. He grew up in the neighborhood on Connecticut Street in Potrero Hill. He played football at San Francisco's Galileo High School and graduated in 1965. In fact, footage from our archives shows he returned to visit his alma mater four years later. He went on to attend City College of San Francisco before transferring to USC. Our Wilson Walker got some insight today into Simpson's life before his infamy from a friend of his family. But it's something that when you can say two letters, you just say OJ, just say OJ. People know who you're talking about around the world. For Timothy Allen Simon, the letters OJ are more than the San Francisco sports hero who became notorious. He knew Simpson from the time he was a child. Well, I'm a native San Franciscan, and, um, you know, OJ is maybe one of the most famous uh, native San Franciscans of all times. I've known his family uh, my entire life. He says the story of OJ Simpson is one that has changed this country. It was at first, the fairy tale success of a young man famously from the city's poorest neighborhoods. You might say this is what I'm trying to do now. You know, right now I'm trying to make it. I, I came from a pretty rough neighborhood around here in Hunters Point, around Hunters Point. I mean, yeah, it was tough. It was tough. Life is tough. So when we say a tough community, I hope that your viewers don't necessarily view that as because of its zip code necessarily. And I feel if I make it, that would be a good example for other kids up there. You know, not out of wealth or opulence, not with a silver spoon, but in the belief that if you, if you apply yourself, if you work hard, that you can become something great. And he did. And then there are the other chapters of the Simpson story, the chase, the murder charges, and the trial of the century. I would say that maybe the trial of two centuries and the fact that it is still as vivid in the minds of those who witnessed the trial and I think this is an important point that it created an industry within media itself. A media frenzy surrounding a trial that would run right through America's racial divisions. An attorney, Simon watched the verdict with his colleagues. Our entire law department, over 200 people, went to the library, the law library, to actually watch the verdict. We were families. In some cases, folks were at literally married, but they knew that that verdict, one way or the other, was going to be controversial. And I think people were trying to not be in a situation where their emotions could impact their professional and personal friendships. Simpson not guilty of the crime of murder. And the reaction to the verdict in Simon's mind, another part of a long, complicated story that has riveted the nation and challenged it. He was acquitted by a jury of his peers, which means that he's innocent. But yet much of America, and I would include, in no offense, media decided, well, even though he was acquitted, we're going to make the determination that this man is guilty. And that is un-American. And if we're going to call ourselves Americans, we should stand true. We should be devoted to that 
concept, that construct of our Jeffersonian democracy. Longtime residents, you might remember the Simpson mural that was here at 17th in Connecticut for many years back in the late 80s, early 90s. It has since been repainted many times over. Now, the Simpson family still has several members living here in San Francisco. They are currently asking for privacy. I remember covering the O.J. Simpson trial when I worked at our CBS station in Sacramento. The news today brings us all back to that time. And I got a chance to talk earlier with veteran KPIX reporter Manny Ramos. He looked back at what it was like to be inside the courtroom for the trial of the century. Covering the trial was amazing. Uh, it was the first time. I, it, it, before that, you didn't really have reality TV. And that began there. And you didn't have wall-to-wall -wall coverage of things. I remember at one point we thought we were covering it too much at Channel 5. So we cut back on the coverage. And we immediately got phone calls. People were actually staying home from work. They were watching it. They were glued to the TV. But since you were there physically reporting on it, is there a moment that you recall that, you know, will always stand out in your mind, whether it's the verdict or mannerisms inside the courtroom or the Goldman family or seeing O.J.? Yeah, well, O.J. Uh, would come in and... Uh, he was larger than life. He really wasn't that big, but he was larger than life. He had a huge head. I remember everybody talking about. Um, and um, he seemed to be relaxing a little more after the uh, the glove incident, when he put on the glove and it didn't fit. Uh, at that point, I think he thought things are going to go okay. And um, so when, uh, what really sticks out to me is uh, that when the jury went in to deliberate, uh, every all the reporters thought, well, this is going to take weeks, you know, before they come back with something. And it only took a few hours. The verdict came in. And what struck, I think, most reporters was that we were stunned that people were so surprised that he was found not guilty. I would think most people thought he was guilty. Uh, but covering the trial, you could see that they kept putting so much doubt in the case that we weren't surprised by that. But then I was stunned how many people around the world were surprised by it. This is also one of those cases where there was a real, you saw the real racial divide on it, on who thought he was guilty and who thought he wasn't guilty. Yeah, a lot of mixed emotions around the trial. It is a conversation we are still having today. And we thank Manny for sharing his memories of his time in the courtroom.